super fun stuff. So recently I've been on a mission to make all the Toon Bullets from the movie Who Framed Roger Rabbit. So far I've completed four of the Toon Bullets, with two more to go. However, I got kind of tired of making the Toon Bullets, I got a little burnt out. So I decided to start working on the actual Toon Gun to go with the bullets. So before I created anything, I went on Google, did an image search, and looked for the Toon Gun from the, the movie. As you can see, there's a lot of images, there's some of, of, of Toon Gun that people have created before. Uh, and there's some other ones that don't make any sense, but the image that I'm, I'm showing you right now is actually from the movie. There's one good shot there, and here's another one. I also have the video on YouTube, and I actually have the movie on DVD as well. I can always pull that up as well, but it's really hard to see the Toon Gun without having these really good stills. So using these images, I made my own recreation of the Toon Gun uh, using Tinkercad. So if you go to Tinkercad, we can see my model that I made, and it looks pretty close to the picture. I mean, I got the uh, cylinder, the barrel, all the necessary parts for the gun, and it turned out pretty good. Um, I modeled this to the size I thought the gun was. It's kind of hard with a cartoon gun, as sometimes the images change shape and change size. For instance, like the bullets look small in one area, but they look big in another. The gun looks bigger in certain areas. I guess it makes sense because it was, it was a hand-drawn cartoon in a way. Um, but here's the model, and uh, yeah, it looks good. Uh, for the model, I started with the cylinder itself. Uh, that is just a cylinder with other cylinders cut out of it, basically. Um, the barrels, same kind of thing. It's a cylinder. I plugged it up a little bit because how the, the picture shows that the barrel itself sits over halfway on the cylinder. So it's a kind of weird design. Normally it would just sit on the little bullet hole over here, but um, since this is a tune gun, it's not actually a real gun. Then I created some of the other accents, like I got the sights on there, I got the trigger, and I got the grip. And the grip was the hardest part to make. I made that basically out of cylinders, but I made different shaped circles and ellipses to, to get the shape I wanted. Also, I have another favorited uh, tool that I like, which is called the partial angle uh, um, uh, shape right here. And you can see it, it's pretty cool. You can actually do any kind of angle that you want in any kind of shape, which is great, really helpful. And now with the gun, um, it looks just like it's a static image. I actually wanted a little more movable parts. It's like the cylinder, I wanted you to be able to spin it. Uh, the trigger, I wanted you to actually squeeze it. The hammer, I want you to move it, even though I'm not gonna make the whole inner workings of a gun. So if you come here, we can select these three shapes real quick and say, oh, let's just make them see-through for now. Usually that's how you cut shapes out of other shapes. And as you can see, I have this big red pin in the middle. And the purpose of that, hopefully if it works, is it holds, it'll be glued on this side, and it'll be a straight pin all the way to the barrel. So the barrel and the handle and the pin will all be a static part that's glued together. This cylinder around this uh, pin will be free freestanding. It's not going to be glued to anything. So uh, theoretically, you should be able to spin this around this pin. I also made some of the other parts easier to print. For instance, the sights. I made those separate pieces rather than being attached to this. Uh, that should limit the amount of support material I would need to print out. Um, and then also if you come here to like the hammer area, I made a little pin system where this will sit on top of. Hopefully if I print this out, I'll just be able to slap that on there. And um, it should print out pretty easy. All these are flat parts, which makes it very nice and easy to print. And uh, hopefully that works. If I put a little uh, metal spring shim guy in here, he should be able to go back and forth with a little pressure. Same thing with the, the trigger itself. I did the same kind of thing, where hopefully I can get that on there without breaking the plastic. And then if I can put a little, I made this little groove right here, this little squarish groove, Hopefully I can uh, have a little, of a, it's like a little aluminum, it's kind of like a spring, but it's more like a, like a shim that's, you know, shaped to a certain way. And that, because metal has a memory, so if you bend it, usually it'll try to bend back, you know, after 5,000 uses, then it'll probably be shot. But, and this should move like this, just a little bit obviously, but not, nothing major. And then also like the handles, the, the handle grips. I made separate pieces that can print 
So that requires no support. The This whole handle piece should require very minimal support just for these little cutaway areas. Uh, this should no support, no support, no support, no support. This may be a little support just here. This is no support and the pin very minimal support as well. So the whole idea was to make this very easy to print but also look good. So if we go back, make it solid again, we can see that it does look pretty good in my opinion and I think it's coming a long way. Um, the moment of truth though would be to see how it actually prints out, which I am starting to do right now. I'm starting to print the, uh, the cylinder part right here just because this is the biggest part and it will take the longest. I think it said it was going to take about eight hours in total. So it's definitely going to take some time to print this whole gun out. So that's pretty much it where I am at uh, making the gun. This is just a quick update to show you what I did. Now I know I didn't go through any details about how I made any of the parts. Um, I think uh, I'll leave that to another video later, maybe when I'm making some of the other uh, tomb bolts since I have two more to create.